Well, hell is certainly frozen over. I never thought I would talk WWE on this channel. But um, I feel compelled to do so. It's now the negative BQ channel, not um, the Impact Lounge. So I can kind of uh, venture off into some other things here and there. Plus, I know there's a lot of you who do watch WWE. Uh, I haven't really consistently watched it in, man, probably since 2016. So about eight years now. Um, I really punched out on it. The last episode I watched was when they ripped off the uh, final deletion. Even though I thought they did a good job with it, the the Wyatts and the New Day, I was entertained. Um, but that was, I think that was the last episode I had watched. And then I, I saw, I think it might have been an Extreme Rules pay-per-view. And it was uh, kind of a knockoff of the Lethal Lockdown where it was Dean Ambrose versus Chris Jericho in the cage. And they were hitting each other with potted plants and stuff. And, and that was a, a point where I decided I was done. And I was I was pretty content just watching TNA at the time. And I did watch a lot of Ring of Honor as well, a little bit of New Japan. I was a little more Markish back then. Um, Lucha Underground was a thing too. So, you know, I was fulfilled. Um, I ordered a few iPay-per-views here or there, you know, independent shows. So I was fulfilled with wrestling. And I just said, I don't, I don't have to watch this anymore. Like if there is one thing about me that I value, it is my time. I do not like my time wasted. So I kind of got to that point where I felt watching WWE was wasting my time. So I, I had stopped and I haven't said particularly good things about it over the years. Uh, you know, as time passes, I know less and less about the wrestlers and less and less about what they're doing and the, and the storylines and all that. But, you know, over the years, I would, you know, I, I always continue to watch the Royal Rumble. Sometimes I will watch uh, WrestleMania. I'd usually watch Elimination Chamber. And that was kind of the extent. But I kind of decided in 2024 here that, you know what, I think I might give WWE a shot again. Because I was fulfilled with Impact, NWA, and uh, AEW. But as time passes, I have just lost interest in AEW. I just I have a really hard time enjoying it now. Um, less and less of the wrestlers I like are on screen. Uh, the matches continue to get longer. The spots mean less and less. You know, um, I'm just I'm, I'm not it, it's just not interesting me anymore. So it has kind of pushed me back over to the the WWE side a little bit. Um, I, I cannot see a scenario where I watch Monday Night Raw or SmackDown on a regular basis. That, that's I almost guarantee that's not going to happen. I was watching a little bit of NXT when it rebranded, and I really enjoyed the first couple episodes. And then as I continue to watch it, I'm like, the acting is absolutely horrible on this show. It is like a modern day glow. And I lost interest in that. There were some people there I liked that had a lot of talent, but, um, just wasn't doing it for me. I don't, I do not like bad acting and there's just way too much of it on that show. I mean, I just saw a clip from this past episode on, on social media, Roxanne Perez in the ring talking and she, I mean, it's fucking fake as a $3 bill. So I, I, I can't see myself watching the, the, the TV shows, but I'm very open to watching the pay-per-views going forward. I was always really annoyed with the you, I, shit. You guys know me. I get very annoyed easily by commentary um i don't like uh cory graves i never did uh michael cole's not so bad now without you know he, without vince screaming in his ear he, he was a lot more tolerable for me but a lot of their commentators over the years J jbl booker t um i just i can't watch them i can't listen to them you know there's very few commentators i like in wrestling obviously because i've i've pretty much complain about every single possible one. So I wanted to give my thoughts here. I'm not going to like review the show. Um, I mean, I'll kind of speak on each match here, but I, I will say what I took from this overall, I talked a little bit about it when I reviewed this, this past impact episode is that I, I, I guess I was very appreciative of the storytelling. And by some of that, I meant the in match stories 
or I mean, you know, the in-ring stories, excuse me. And then there were some of the storylines I was familiar with because it's not, it's not hard to be familiar with what WWE is doing because it dominates social media and you see people talking about it daily. So it's not like, you know, someone who doesn't really watch impact misses, you know, they don't watch the shows that they're completely clueless, clueless on what's going on. It's different because WWE is everywhere. That's where the money is obviously in this industry. So I was familiar with some of the storylines. I'm familiar with the wrestlers for the most part. There's there's one or two that I'm just like, who the fuck is this? But um, there was just some storytelling that really stood out to me. Now, to take things back to TNA for a bit, a TNA in-ring storytelling is pretty solid. And even though they're a little creatively bankrupt at the moment, there are some good storylines, and, and over the years, there have been some good storylines. But it's very different when you're talking a smaller promotion. Because, you know, one of the things that I get upset about is when TNA signs someone from WWE and they come and they wrestle for the title after winning one or two matches. And then they usually win the title. And maybe it's, it's unfair of me. And the reason I say that is because it's a smaller roster. You know, I can't expect Nick Nemeth to, to you know, go through 10 guys before he gets to the world title scene. You know what I'm saying? So it can be challenging to drag things out and to do long-term storytelling. Where here, um, there's so many possibilities. And, you know, we've seen, we, we see now that they're doing storylines lasting over the course of a couple of years. Um and then even like with TNA champions, sometimes I'm like, man, I wish they had a longer run, but you know, is it possible when the opponents don't exist? So I'm probably unfair on TNA when I criticize those things. Um, so it was kind of refreshing though here to just, I could just feel it without even knowing the company very well. I could just feel it. And you know, my family watched it with me. So it was a good family moment. And I talk, I've, I've, you know, I've talked in depth about when my family and I went to AEW Collision when it was here in Henderson. And um, my kids were struggling. And, and I, I've said this a few times, but I'm, I'm going to repeat myself. I view my kids as casual wrestling fans. They do not watch a weekly television show for anything. They will watch pay-per-views with me. We will go to live events. They don't watch the TV. They don't care to. So with that being said, they don't always know the wrestlers on the roster. So like when we went, we went to Hard to Kill, you know, my kids are just now becoming familiar with, and, uh, and Snake Eyes as well, with Okada, with Osprey, um, and then some of the guys on the TNA roster as well because they just watch the main shows with me. So they don't, they miss the stories. And because TNA does a good job of in-ring storytelling, they know who to cheer for or who to, who to boo. And it's, sometimes it's not always the healer baby face. Like sometimes they just they gravitate towards certain wrestlers because of the storytelling that happens. So where when we went to AEW Collision, they were they were just sitting there bored out of their minds. And we've been to AEW shows before that they've enjoyed. It's just the way that the company has progressed over the years where it's just like wrestling and it means that they're random matches that mean jack shit. So I'm sitting with my kids and they couldn't figure out who the heel was, who the baby face was, who they wanted to win. They felt nothing watching these. They just saw people doing moves. So when they're sitting and watching a show like this, they're, they're very quickly can, can invest in, okay, I want, I'm going for this. I want this person to win. The commentators do a very good job of like kind of getting you up to speed on the storylines and all that stuff. So it was a it was it was cool to sit with my family and watch it. Like my my wife sitting there, my youngest son really does not care about wrestling. But my youngest daughter watched it. You know, my my son um my oldest daughter actually didn't. But um she she came she was in and out, but yeah, for the most part, it was my my youngest daughter, my son, my wife, and myself 
watching it. And we enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. The at WrestleMania night one, people were saying online it wasn't good. It was good to me because I don't I didn't have anything to put it up against. I didn't go into it with any kind of expectations. I had a very open mind. And I I guess now that I'm watching wrestling reviews or, or hearing a couple, I mean, watching, listening, whatever reviews about mania, I can see where people had the issues, but because I don't care like that, I was able to just kind of be entertained. And it seemed like when I watch an NWA show, like I don't, I, I like the company. I don't overly invest in the, in the freaking wrestlers and the, the company to where anything they do really bothers me that much. It's different with TNA because I'm, I'm very invested in its success and I want to see it get to the next level. Um, they, they make me happy. Sometimes they piss me off others, but it's because I care um, significantly more than I do for other companies. But as I said, the first night I enjoyed that it kicked off like Rhea Rick, uh, excuse me, Rhea Ripley and Becky Lynch. I loved it. I thought that was a great match. And that's one of the ones people are saying, uh, it was okay. It wasn't Charlotte. See, people online, well, it wasn't Rhea Ripley versus Charlotte last year. I didn't watch that shit. I have no reference point. I'm not a WWE, you know, Mark who's sitting there comparing this and this and no, they could have done this. I'm just like enjoying the show as a really as a casual. So I love this match. We're, we're, real Ripley fans in this house. Like, obviously I said, I don't watch a lot of WWE, but when I do, like I'm drawn to her. My son is very drawn to her. I liked Becky Lynch quite a bit when I was watching NXT and I was watching WWE. So I was invested in this. I, I enjoyed it. And I, and I thought the finish was good as well too. And it felt like the right person won. It's hard for me to say exactly who's the right and who's wrong. The only issue I kind of have is I think Rhea Ripley is supposed to be a heel, right? And she comes off as a baby face. Um, and that's never something that I, that's one of the reasons I have gotten away from AEW is that the, all the heels get cheered and no one's really a heel there. The, um, the, the one match I paid no, no attention to was a uh, judgment that ladder match with the judgment day, new day, awesome truth, a town down under new catch Republic public, I don't like car crash matches. I, I don't even I don't even really like tag team wrestling a lot of the time. So uh, I always say I love two single wrestlers who can fucking work. That is that is wrestling to me. Um, and I use the Eddie Edwards versus Frankie Kazarian as an example. Like that's the kind of wrestling I can get into. Just two guys I can work. I don't need to see high spots. I don't like to see. I really don't. I don't really like seeing more than two people in the ring. <laughs> that's just that's just me. I just like one on one matches with guys who can work. So um, I didn't care about this. I couldn't even tell you who won. You know what? I know Miz and R Truth won, and then A Town Down Under won. Didn't fucking care. So I would imagine this is one of the the matches where people kind of checked out on. That's what I'm going to say. DIY, I think, was in this match, too. I don't think I said them. So they were in this as well. Um, I just don't care about any of uh, any the people. The New Day, when I was watching WWE, at one, was my favorite part of the show for about six months. I thought they were just the hottest act. And then they got extremely, extremely stale. And uh, they're still kind of doing the same shtick. <laughs> kind of crazy. Uh, did not care about Rey Mysterio and Andrade versus Santo Escobar and Dominic Mysterio. The St Mysterio, I'm pretty sure Andrade and Rey won. Uh, there was a lot of fuckery here, so this is another one where I can see where people are just like, I, you know, I'm, I'm checking out. That was one of the ones that didn't really um, get over. Now, when the Usos fought each other, I was invested in this. I thought it was good. Now, when I listen to reviews, they're kind of like this match sucked ass because they had all this time to to build it and it was as predictable as it could be, whether it was the outcome or just the wrestling itself. And something I can relate to, because I think I've said things like this with watching TNA, where you know, people were saying with the Usos that they they desperately need to be updated. Um 
as far as their move sets and their finishers. They both did the fucking top rope splash. Jay won with it right after he kicked out of Jimmy's. Uh, there was lots of super kicks. And I remember at one point when the Usos were, before they joined the bloodline, they were one of the most stale acts in wrestling to me. There was just absolutely no fucking, um, nothing changed about them. They were just doing the same shtick for years and years and years. So I'm all for that. Like, I think when you rebrand yourself as a wrestler, I think you have to, re, re, you know, um, update your skill set as well, your move set. And I can see why people didn't like this, but um, for me, I, I didn't know any different. So I thought I thought it was okay. My youngest daughter, for the life of her, couldn't, bless her heart, understand why these two brothers were fighting each other. And she was very worried about their relationship after this. Um, another match that I liked, another women's match, Bianca Belair and Naomi and Jay Cargill against Damage Control. Um, I think Dakota Kai is like stupid hot. So I'm already like invested here. I'm a Jade Cargo guy. She was she's super green and she was green here too. She looked no better than when she was in AEW. None. She actually looked worse in my opinion. But I do like her because of her character and her aura and and all that. I am I am a supporter of her hers. You know, Naomi, aka Trinity, was in the match. She is a total it's weird seeing her as a, a complete background dancer in comparison to where she was in TNA and running through everybody, you know, running through Deanna and, and Giselle Shaw. And, you know, she's, you, she was unbeatable. Right. Um, but she did good things for TNA, but I'm just saying it's very weird to look at it. And Bianca Belair, my youngest daughter really likes her. She watched the Royal rumble with us. She watched them um, elimination chamber. You know, and, and and Mania, obviously, and she's very drawn to her. And I will say that about what was refreshing for me, too, is that a lot of these wrestlers look like stars. I think that's why I'm drawn to a guy like Moose, like someone who just looks like, you know, you don't you see him walking around him or her and you just don't see enough, anyone else like that. And I think TNA has a balance of that with indie looking dudes, but I can, I expect that from a smaller company. I expect that watching TNA or NWA that I'm, I'm going to see indie style wrestlers, but it was never as obvious to me because again, I'm watching AEW for years and I'm like, yo, a lot of these motherfuckers look like me. When I went to the Indianapolis, um, to, to the, uh, squared circle expo to the convention in Indy, there was no shit. Someone came up to me and said, what time? Because there's a show, a wrestling show involved as well. He's like, what time do you go on tonight? I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, the wrestling. I'm like, oh, I'm not going to it. He's like, oh, you're not on the card? I'm like, no. Like, the dude thought I was one of the wrestlers. No shit. It was, it was, a, it was two dudes together, as a matter of fact. Not together, but two guys hanging out. Um they no shit thought I was one of the indie wrestlers on the card. That's a problem. Like I hit, I do work out. I'm not in the best shape of my life at the moment, but that says something because now you, you, you know, like people are accustomed to, to, to wrestlers looking like us, like normal people. So, you know, like the girls here, they look like stars, you know what I mean? All of them. That's the way I saw it. So I enjoyed this. I thought, um, Jade was extremely green. I think that when she hit her finish at the end, it was way too slow. And, you know, but um, I had fun watching the match. Uh, the, the entrances were amazing. One thing that, that I, it's hard for TNA because they're, they're a smaller company. They don't have the budget, obviously. But when you're watching WrestleMania, it's, there's a presentation and the pageantry and, and just there's, you know, the entrances and everything. Like it's a spectacle, you know? I think TNA has to find a way, again, much smaller budget, right? But I think they have to find a way to where the pay-per-views don't feel like long episodes of impact because a lot of the times they do. It doesn't mean they're not good shows because really TNA doesn't put on bad shows. It's always the presentation and the production and the lighting and the colors and it's shit like that, right? But when you're talking about the actual show, 
they're always good, but I just think they have to find a way to say, hey, we're going to present this like it's big. Like Bound for Glory has never felt like they say it's their WrestleMania. It, it has never felt like that in comparison to the other show. Slammiversary is the one that they put a little into, but I think they have to find a way within within budget to just make it feel a little more special. Like Moose, Moose kind of has the WrestleMania mindset where he usually has a different entrance. Um, he usually goes for moves that he doesn't typically on TV. So there's some things I think TNA could could take away from that. Uh, Gunther and Sami Zayn was really, really good. Um, again, just two people who can fucking work. And the storytelling was phenomenal here. I've, I was never like a huge Sami Zayn guy. Um, I was actually pulling for Gunther to, to retain here. But it, it was all really, really well done. The finish and, and, you know, these finishes are very logical that WWE has. TNA is very similar as well. They have logical finishes. But again, the, the best comparison for me is AEW watching WWE. And you've got these, you know, 50, 60, I'm obviously exaggerating, high spots in the match. And they kick out of everything. You shoot them in the chest with a gun and they, they kick out at, one and a half, you know what I'm saying? Like here, like like there's times when you watch an AEW match, you're like, well, that's it. That has to be the finish. And they kick out. And you had guys here, whether it's Roman Reigns or Gunther, like it didn't take hitting them with every st- everything, including the kitchen sink to beat them. It pretty much took the finishers, hitting a couple finishers and boom, you know? So again, something else that was quite refreshing and then, you know, Cody Rhodes versus Seth Rollins. Um, I mean, Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins versus The Rock and Roman Reigns. You know, my, we were all watching this as a family. Uh, my wife really wanted to see this. Uh, she wanted to see The Rock. And um, I enjoyed the shit out of it. I thought The Rock and Roman Reigns looked like badasses. They looked like fucking grown men against a couple of freaking high schoolers. You know what I'm saying? But I thought they just looked like grown men. Um little bit of fuckery but like i just enjoyed it now i know the wwe universe if you will loves samantha Irvin. i think she's not dave penzer you know what i'm saying like she has a level of passion that is completely unmatched as a ring announcer but i mean my god for me it was so over the top and it's every match and it's every word and every syllable and you're just holding out the I mean, you know, like when I would give Penzer a hard time and I said, everyone gets the same ring in- introduction, like they do in WWE too. She, you know, every single person gets the same amount of passion from her. So it's, it's, if if you do it for everyone, you're doing it for nobody. So I know that's not a popular opinion. I know there's some people who agree with me. I, I know there is because I've seen it. Um, but I know the popular opinion is that she's the goat, if you will. And I fucking hate that term. I know that's a popular opinion. Uh, for me, it's 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 very over the top. It's too much. I think it, I feel like she's trying to get herself over um, at the at the expense of the wrestlers at times. It's it's no different than fucking Aubrey Edwards as a referee. Um, and I know it's not a popular opinion. It's my opinion though. Just like I say, you know, you don't have to agree with it. I say that all the time. Uh, just like I don't agree with a lot of y'all's. You don't you don't agree with me, mine, but. As I've said many, many times, I always use my family and my wife as the barometer of of how good or bad wrestling is because they don't watch it consistently. And I mean, she was like, what is up with this lady? You know, okay, lady, we get it. She took so long to announce this main event that I I thought WrestleMania night two was going to start. So for, for a lot of you guys, the majority of you, you probably like it. I think it's 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 extremely over the top. I thought the guy who did Elimination Chamber was much easier to listen to. Uh, to me, the perfect ring announcer in the modern day, in the modern era, is uh, Brandy Rhodes, and that's I know probably no one agrees with that. But me, she to me, she had the right amount of energy and passion, and without getting herself over. Um, I think Justin Roberts is very good as well. He tries to get himself over a little bit sometimes because that's just the nature of AEW. Um, Sam Laterna is is one that like be on the lookout for her. Like they got to find, she's got to be on TV being a ring announcer somewhere. 
she she's excellent at everything she fucking does actually like she's better than everyone she plays like the background for tna she's better than everyone that's in in, in front of her you know um i shit i would bring her in if i was nwa because that dude stinks as well kyle davis but yeah this match here um i loved it i loved it loved it loved it i just i'd love seeing the rock out there and i you know as a casual wrestling fan you can't ask for more than what this match did if you're if you're a mark you probably didn't love this match and you didn't love Cody losing, but I love, I don't like Cody Rhodes. I'll throw that out there right now. I'm not a fan of his. I like seeing him lose. I agree with Vince Russo. He's a heel. The marks have chosen him. That's what he always says. The marks have chosen him as their guys, their baby face. He's a heel to me. He always has been. Um, I, I've, I liked him in TNA. I liked, it was after the TNA. So I liked him in WWE at one point too. It was once he started into the Ring of Honor and AEW, he became very annoying to me because he takes things too far, thinks he can get everything over, and then eventually the people turn. And that's what's going to happen likely with WWE as well, in my opinion. Uh, and then night two, Seth Rollins versus Drew McIntyre. I did not see it. I turned it on late. Uh, I heard it was good. I did see the money in the bank cash in. And I thought that was pretty cool as well with uh, Damian Priest and the story they're telling with Punk and, and Drew McIntyre. So that was that was really cool. Really cool little moment. I didn't see the match. Um, one match that I also didn't see because I didn't care was uh, Final Testament, which is Karrion Cross and Authors of Pain. My son was like, is that Cross? I mean, he looks so ridiculous with hair. Um, and it was versus Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits. I think they're called the, the Pride or something. Um, not a very good, not a very strong name in my opinion. You guys know I hate garbage matches and this was just no different. I don't know why Snoop Dogg needs to be a part of every single fucking WrestleMania. It feels like every time I watch WrestleMania, Snoop is there. I, I don't like Snoop. I'm from California and I actually listen to all Snoop's albums. I have every album. I have all the CDs, obviously digital. I don't think he has a bad album, actually. People say, oh, well, he peaked at, at Doggy Style. I think everything he does is good musically. I don't think he's a good rapper necessarily, but I think his music is very, very good. But he annoys me as a, a character, like on commentary and, you know, being skinny. And, and uh, I remember him years ago throwing um, Kurt Henning's son over the top rope. And, you know, I think he did like a top rope splash or something on AEW. Like I hate celebrities in the ring. So Snoop annoys me as a person. I like his music a lot. My favorite album is Dog Father, the one the one that people are like, "What the fuck is this?" Like I like all his albums, okay? I don't he annoys me as a person. I didn't need him coming out once let alone twice on this fucking show. But I I yeah. I mean, once they brought in you know Bully Ray aka Bubba Ray and um snoop i was like i don't need to watch this match uh la styles and i mean excuse me aj styles and la Knight. that was um that was interesting a couple guys that tna felt were replaceable you know la Knight was someone that the the tna marks thought was replaceable because he didn't want to wrestle tessa blanchard or whatever and they you know they tend to turn on people who don't want to be there and he's become a huge star and um this was a this was a great match these were this is the exact type of match that I'm like two motherfuckers who can work and it didn't take hitting everything but the kitchen sink to, um, to beat AJ Styles. There was a miscalculation at the end. Ellie and I hits him off the ropes, hits his finish and, and boom, you know, so very enjoyable. And it's just good to see Eli Drake get his, um, get what he, you know, just what he deserves, like just as far as his recognition and popularity. When I went years ago to the, the Impact versus Lucha Underground show and he was out there, you know, I heard guys behind me like, who the fuck is this guy? You know, I, you know, just completely clowning him because he was doing a promo in the ring with Brian Cage. And, you know, this guy's like, man, this can you believe this company uh, made him in their, their champion? Because people were there for Lucha Underground. There was few Impact fans in, in the crowd there. Um, it's like going to a basketball game when the Washington Wizards are really bad and the fans don't really want to show up and then they're playing the Celtics 
and the Celtics come and take out 75% of the arena on the road. That that's what that environment was for Impact versus Lucha Underground. You know, so people were just clowning the shit out of them, and it just I, I wish I could see what's that that fat fuck's reaction now to his popularity. He's probably yeah, you know what I mean. But so many wrestling fans just support the narrative they want to support instead of just you know recognizing talent regardless of company. Then Logan Paul versus Kevin Owens and Randy Orton. I didn't get to watch it, unfortunately, but I've, you know, my son told me about it, but I've enjoyed every Logan Paul match I've watched. Uh, my son got a kick out of the uh, the YouTuber that, that came out of the prime bottle. I told him, I was like, keep an eye on that character. I was like, someone, someone's there. And then uh, Eosky versus Bailey. I thought that was really good as well. I thought the women's wrestling was just, I, I thought they were all very good. We talk about TNA's knockouts division. I don't think the knockouts necessarily have the best matches when it comes to women. I just think they're best prominent. They're best featured on the card. They're they're in more prominent roles in relation to the rest of the show. But I, I think a lot of these women really come off like stars. The ones they keep off screen, like Maxine Dupree and stuff like that for WrestleMania, like those are not stars, you know. But like Bailey, Io Sky, and just some of the aforementioned people, you know, they're they're wrestling stars, and uh, this one was a, enjoyable as well, where Bailey got the win, and then you know Roman Reigns in the main event versus Cody Rhodes, like you can't complain about how that ended if you're a Cody fan. I knew everyone knew Cody was going to win. I would have loved for Roman Reigns to win, um, but just because, like I said, I'm, I don't like Cody. He, he's really nice in real life. I've met him. I just mean as a wrestling character. Um, he's someone I like to boo because I think he's a heel. And they did the bloodline rules, and they, I mean, there was all sorts of fuckery here. And um, I know like the the hardcore WWE people thought it was too much and it was overbooked, but it was done to eliminate the bloodline out of the picture. So it, it didn't really bother me. Like if they were like helping Cody win, they're all hitting moves on Roman and stuff, that would have been like different. This was not like Triple H versus Sting where NWO came and everyone, all these, you know, old dudes came down. This this got genuine as as casual fans, genuine pops from my household. And I think the Undertaker spot was meant for Stone Cold because it kind of came out of nowhere. My family wanted Stone Cold out there. They didn't want, they didn't want the Undertaker. So like, where's Stone Cold? But as far as like the emotion and everything they put into this, like it was pretty impressive. And, it, you know, it was what the fans wanted. I do think the fans will turn on Cody soon. Not soon, um, but in, in time, I think they will. Because wrestling fans are very fickle, especially WWE ones and AEW ones. Uh, they will turn on you very quickly. I would say WWE is a little more loyal to their guys than the AEW fan base, but I do expect people to ultimately turn on him. I don't think Cody is a star like that. I think they will turn on him, but as far as what they did here and and just the emotion to it and everything, like it was, it was pretty cool. It was a cool moment uh, for Cody. I kind of worry where they go from here because the bloodline really dominated this show from what I understand for a while. So how do you present Roman Reigns without a belt going forward? So that's going to be interesting. Um, he'll probably go win the the other title. Is my, is my thoughts but so yeah overall i enjoyed it quite a bit i'm not going to be reviewing wwe on this channel going forward but um if i end up doing a membership on here or a patreon i had a patreon going before i moved to vegas but i just haven't had the time to to reinstate it um or to do content for it but you know maybe in the future i will talk to pay-per-views uh, not here on the ch main channel but as I said, a Patreon or membership, something like that. Perhaps I will do that. But overall, I did enjoy Mania XL quite a bit. And I, I do think I'm going to commit to watching the WWE pay-per-views going forward because I have eliminated the AEW pay-per-views for my rotation. I pretty much just watched the Impact and the NWA ones where NWA doesn't even really have pay-per-views now. They're just going to be like TV specials like TNA did for a little while. Um but I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to commit to it. So thanks for uh, checking this, this pot out. And um, love to know your guys' thoughts on the show if you watched it.
Usually I try to have my face on screen here when I'm doing long podcasts, but I uh, was not in the mood for it today. <laughs> so um, I am your boy, BQ. I'll talk to you soon. Peace.